Welcome to the Top 200 Podcast with your host, Herschel Foran. What's up everybody, it's Herschel Foran from High School Top 200 and uh, I'd like to welcome you back to another Monday Morning Meeting Podcast. Um, I am Herschel Foran, the one that runs High School Top 200. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, subscribe. Uh, I was going to say smash that like button. I hate doing that kind of stuff. I hate even like saying this kind of stuff. But for a lot more people to um, go and see First 15 Rugby, like the, like and subscribe. Share it with your mates, share it with your family, friends, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, this is the place where you get First 15 Rugby. The only place that you get First 15 Rugby, by the way. Um, if you can find another place to do it, then go and do it. I know that there's people that are around. They have asked me like, uh, <laughs> like some people have asked me for uh, like uh, free subscription and stuff like that because it's like I was thinking, mate, just go somewhere else, you know, go somewhere else, go find some some other resource to to get your first thing fixed. But this is honestly the only place. I'm the only one that really does it. I'm the only one that really follows us week to week, day to day. I do this full time, um, and I try my hardest because you know a lot of these boys need a. Uh, need the exposure, they need the opportunities, they need the um, uh, their confidence boost, that extra push, that extra motivation, whether I've picked you in my team of the week or not, you, just that extra, I've ranked you higher than somebody else that you think that you're better than, you just need that extra, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the place where you want to get that extra, um, you know, motivation to do to do better, to, to lift your game, because some people I don't like the fact that I've ranked them in their 50s and I'm like maybe the third option is a position but they don't like the fact that they're in the 50s and they think they should be in the top 20 things like that so if I'm that motivation take that motivation and roll with it you know I, I'm happy to do all that kind of stuff if you want to react off hate from you know something I have said then that's fine if it motivates you to get better then get better but um, you know, like and subscribe on my Facebook page, Instagram. Uh, I do TikTok sometimes. Still trying to get used to doing all of them at the same time, um, all of them all at once. You know, different pages to giving different content, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you want to see the rankings and stuff, go to hstop200.com. Uh, uh, it's only five dollars a month. I know that you guys drink coffees all the time, and that costs about eight dollars to twelve dollars or whatever kind of coffee you're buying. Save one of those coffees from the day, subscribe to uh, hstop200.com and uh, get all the information that you need from um, First Dean around the country. Um, we're going to start with something that annoys me. And I, I've talked about this on other years. I don't know if I've talked about it every year, but I've talked about it other years. I'm going to start with a call that people make called talk and I think I've, I've discussed it before but I keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it and when you're advised to talk on the field by coaches or by by other players or you know what that means is communicate it means communicate or it means direct it means give information give um, uh, give me an action to do it doesn't mean just say words and it doesn't mean you say talk so the other person then turns to the other guy and says talk and then they say to the forwards talk talk is not the call unless you've got a call that means there's talk and it means something then by all means say talk but for the most part it means communicate now, what this means, right, is that, for example, if, the, if you're in a scrum, if you're in the 22, the other team is looking to kick out. When you say talk, say, communicate what you are seeing and what you are going to do and the options that you have. For example, make sure you tell the fullback, I've got your back. Once the ball comes down and it's kicked down to you, I'm gonna drop back, if they fake a kick, I'm gonna push up, you push up behind me. 
if you're a winger and you're talking to your center say hey if they push across jam in and i'll be right there behind you and then you tell your fullback to come in all these kind of things is what they mean by talk it's giving some instruction and communication and making sure that everyone knows what they're doing now there's a big thing and like and this is like one of those big keys that first things that are big first things that are uh, more organized and more onto it with their play calls and their roles on the field is that when you say talk most big first things will say i will cover your inside if they grub her, let's both drop back. If they kick down, let's drop back. You come across, they say things like that. Small schools would say, talk. Then the other guy looks and goes, okay, bro. And he looks at the other guy and goes, hey, talk. Hey, boys, talk, talk. And everyone, for some reason, is saying talk. Doesn't mean anything. They just think, oh, we just got to say words on the field. And the more that we say words, the more that we're all informed of what's going on or, or like it makes up makes the other team think that we know what we're doing that's not what they mean by talk so the next time someone's on the field or someone on the sideline or coaches say hey boys let's talk let's skip it he's saying really let's communicate he's saying let your inside man know what you're doing or he's saying let your outside man know what you're doing or he's saying let the forward pack know what the call is so that they've got communication and they've got um, a role to play once we start playing again that's what talk means it means let's tell the forwards let's jump into our pods and we're going for our second phase uh, we're going for our second phase pods we're setting up two not three let's push across after that and we'll attack the blind side that's what those things mean so on the field when coaches say talk they mean communicate so communicate also it bloody helps man it helps out if you know as a winger what your center is going to do so if you know the scenario and you know the picture you go hey we're in our midfield we need to make sure that the defense and so once you see where everybody's lining up make sure you tell your centers like hey have you got him because then i've got this guy and i've got to pull across the back we're going to make sure that uh, someone drops down. We're going to make sure this inside line is... Like, say things like that. Say things about the things that you're worried about. Say, hey, if he chips over the top, make sure you guys get back. If he chips over this side, hey, you make sure you come around. Tell your blind side, hey, if you take right inside, I'm going to take outside you. Or say, you shoot across and I'll cover your inside. Say things like that. And I'm talking to you smaller schools right now too. Make sure everybody knows what's going on and what everybody else is doing. All right, now there's a big difference here because if everybody's informed of what's going on and everyone knows what your role is, the guy that doesn't know is not actually talking and not actually saying anything, he's probably the one that you have to talk to and go, bro, do you know what you're doing? Because if you don't, you're the one that has to say, I don't know what's going on. Now, if you don't want to embarrass them, quickly go, hey, bro, if their number eight runs, you take him and I'll come in close to you. I'll, I'll pull in tight and I'll make sure that you're covered too. Halfbacks, make sure you know that all your blind, your blind and your open side and your number eight know what's going on. And that you're that extra cover if you have to cover. Or you, you're telling that number six, hey, you pull across straight away. Eight, you jump inside there. I'll cover behind you too. And if there's no cover, I'll drop him back this way. You have to say things like that. The guys that are not talking are the ones that really don't know what's going on. All right. The guys that are not quickly dropping back when you know that there's a phase coming or there's a pod coming or you've got, you know, um, uh, different sets uh, 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 along your grid. If they don't know what's going on, those are the guys you need to tell and make sure at the next break they'll go, bro, do you know what you're doing? Bro, the next time we do this, this is what you're looking at and make sure that they recognize what's going on. And I've got to admit, when I was playing first team rugby and I played for three years, I was terrible and I really didn't know what was going on most of the time. All I knew my job was, I'm going to get that ball and I'm going to run it straight. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to try to tackle someone. I'm going to make sure that in the scrums, I don't lose my scrums and then I know that what my lineup calls are. I was real, real basic. For the first two years of first team, I was real, real basic. I didn't know anything of that. And I'm like, there's this game that I watch myself and I tell people this all the time. If I was grading myself in the top 200, I probably wouldn't put myself in there. 
I probably wouldn't put myself in a high school top 200 but just based on the two no three games that I've seen of myself play when I was at high school I thought fire up bro you're you're big you're strong but you don't even know what's going on even my basic running technique was kind of terrible when I look at it like right now like I'll, I'll be one of those big guys that would hit on contact and then I'll just go straight to the ground I don't know why I did that and even like when I think back to it as well it's just like why didn't I make that second move why didn't I roll off why don't I use that extra push? Why don't I actually like leg drive for maybe two more meters and then, you know, push forward? I didn't even know even in tackles, I used to just make tackles and put guys to the ground. I actually didn't know put them to the ground, get over the ball and like, you know, over the ball tackles like back in the days was a bit different. But for myself, when I watched myself, I was thinking, ah, you're terrible, bro. Like you really needed a lot of work. That's probably why I didn't make any rep teams. Like, you know, even when I traveled for Northern Regions, which is like, uh, uh, Northern Regions is the Blues and the Chiefs area together. They, they they picked the A's and the B's of Northern Regions. And I went to that trial two years in a row. And obviously I didn't make it because I was terrible. But I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, you, sh you shouldn't have even made those trials, to be honest. And so, like, um, all these kind of things is that, like, there's guys on your team that go to training every week and go to training and do all everything, that, but they still don't, uh, I don't... It's not... They might not understand the concept of what you guys are trying to achieve. And they don't they probably don't recognize the little uh the little subtle patterns that you have and why we're using them like and if you're a guy on the team and you don't know that kind of stuff ask your best mate hey why do we do this i actually don't even know why we do that like if you're too shamed to come out and go oh coach i don't know what, why we're doing this ask one of your best friends and go bro why do we why do we do it like this even right now you might as well ask in your third in your third uh, game of the of the season, then ask you know in July when it's coming towards the end. It's like, why do we actually like ask for it right now? And there's a bunch of you out there that are too shamed to say that you don't know what's going on, but you know, ask for it. And like the communication side of it is is based on the fact that um, making sure that there are less. Um, breakdowns in communication as possible where people don't understand what's going on the more that you can inform like your teammates that may not know what's going on a two shame it's just like even if you just bark out those those direct um those direct uh demands and commands and also roles that you have the ones that need to know the message will get it without having to put themselves in it you know some guys are just not um, and that, you know, that humble space enough to go, hey, bro, I don't even know what's going on. All I do is just tackle and run the ball. And like, which is fine. If you do it well, it's just fine. But at some point, you're going to you're gonna start wanting to recognize what you're actually doing so that you don't have to rely on other people to say what's going on. So um, that was one thing. I, I keep hearing it all the time. And it actually really annoys me when I hear people just yell on the sideline, you know, talk, talk. I, it annoys me more when, well, you know, it annoys me when, parents say it because I obviously they don't know what they're talking about most of the time but when coaches say it to players and then their players just reply with the same thing of talk the coaches should be really saying hey let him know what you're doing let him know what's going on you know like even just simple point out who you're marking and say I've got him once you do that then you can add on different things all right, if you're shaping to kick, if you're shaping to pass, if you're shaping to drop back, if that fella pulls around, it's like, you know, talk about that kind of stuff. If they start, if they set up right here as a pod, and then, you know, you can see them gearing up, it's like, make sure you mention it. Make sure you mention it. Pull guys across. You know, things like that. It was, it was cool, because like, even last week when I was watching like, um, Christ College and, and Timaru last week, I thought that game was real entertaining from the point, like even Timaru, who in the end, Got a bit of a hiding but like you can see a lot of the good things that they're doing and, and like because that team is, is pretty new those boys need the communication side of it Christ look like a really like really good functioning team and like I guess their tour over in Japan worked out for them because these boys were um, all real talkers of all real um, in sync and you could see the shape of their offense coming together and and how they were attacking and then the big boys knew when to be big boys and then and then the young and you know the smaller guys knew when to be the small guys they knew where the hits were coming in they knew where the guys were 
um, you know, distributing the ball, whether it was from first five or second five. And I like that. Uh, th this Christ back line, I think, is probably pretty underrated. And I, and even myself, I probably, I didn't underrate them, but I haven't talked about them enough like they should be. You know, like, I haven't talked about them like they should be talked about. You know, and I think, like, um, for the most part, like, Christ College, because they're led by... Um, Gavin Holder who's a year 12 fella um, him from first five and I think because he played last year as well and, and, and it always does like um, obviously it always helps if you played last year but the fact that he's got guys like I think Zin Zan was the other one who's the prop um, who can also distribute but then because you got Gavin, Rico, PJ and then you got Felix at the back who's like another good guy to sort of second third phase take control of the ball because i think i have a feeling that uh, i have this thought that i think gavin should attack the line more these are just my thoughts gavin don't do it if the coach is saying hey hold back listen to your coach first i'm just saying what i see as i see gavin who's a really good attacking player he's got weapons in and in, in rico and pj and then even like henry um on one i forgot the japanese kid's name but like even with those weapons when if he was to sort of attack that sideline i think that like they could get more out of the attacking especially when you got someone like louis who um at number eight uh Tupuola as well who's a big time runner he should be a second third phase runner and and not put him in so much because you still got thomas and um and what's his name, uh, the other prop, uh, uh, who's also name is Thomas, like um, Hazeldine or something like that. Um, yeah, but you know, because I mean, Thomas is like the hooker as well, but um, they have those weapons. Gavin needs to, uh, for me, Gavin needs to um, separate those attacking guys that he has and then using them in different phases and then, but also him show that he can attack. And then you got someone uh, like Frank Meats is probably um, just so solid right now over the ball. I, I think it makes, um, you know, it gives them a lot of comfort with that kind of thing. But in terms of like that attacking side of it, you know, I think Gavin and that, you know, just the game that I watched before, they had like a really good, they had like a really good structure to the way that they were playing and the way that they're attacking as well. So. Um, yeah, that's just one thing from last week that, that I really liked. Um, um, but this week, I went to sort of... Uh, uh, oh wait, should I talk about Wellington? Yeah, I'll talk about Wellington first. Because Wellington College and, and like uh, Colin Towns, uh, they played on Wednesday. And um, so grateful for Huddy Sports who put that on and they always do really good. So like, uh, go and subscribe to Huddy Sports. Um, uh, they put on some games for in Wellington well as well and they always have uh, a good commentator from, um, you know, Adam as well that, that does it um, sometimes for them. but. Huddy Sports has done great with like the games that they've showed and that they've uh, been able to live stream. But watching that game, um, and you know, I've complained about Wellington rugby as a whole. But I think, you know, with, and I will talk about Wellington College first because Wellington College is, is like traditionally one of those um, one of those strong powerhouses that used to be and everyone was kind of everyone had that fear no I'm not saying everyone was scared of them but everyone had that fear and, and, and were wary of, of who they were now With the game, with with the team being led by Harry, um, Ely is like another one who's probably 
uh, one of the, the main players that you'd probably look for um, Finn and Shay uh, also on the wings obviously Archie um, him and um, Charisma Lazarus is probably another one that you'd look at um, as, as the main leaders with Dan Hawes at hooker um, like those kind of guys um, and then you got the youngsters like um, uh, Schwolger. I don't even know how to say his first name. Someone pronounce, like, say how you say his first name. Uh, but Schwolger at number eight with the big hair. Um, obviously, he's like a top five talent in, in New Zealand as year 11s. And, um, and he's pretty much showing why he's that, why he's this good, you know. But Wellington College, like, the, when I watch them, um, I wish they would do I wish they would physically I think physically take over games I feel like they got the personnel but from a physical standpoint even though St. St. Um, St. Pat's Town lost I thought St. Pat's Town was the more physical team like you, you may argue you know well they won so what does that matter well the thing is that it matters when you come to teams like Silverstream like you have to match up physically with Silverstream you're not going to win if you can dominate physically over Scots you can beat Scots because Scots is going to outrun anybody Scots have better runners and attacking players than anybody um, almost anybody in, in the Hurricanes area but they lack a lot of uh, to me toughness toughness and like the physical play they're not going to win physical battles but they're going to try and run you off the off the field even their big boys like um you know they got toby and um tavita and like um um what's his uh, what's his name is it is it uh the number eight joe uh, i think he's the other number eight and, you know there would see like those guys uh are more finesse running players than anything else. So there, which is always going to get the ball for you. But the toughness side of it, I don't think Scotts has. Like, if, you know, if you feel the need to use that as field Scotts, fine, whatever. But if Cole actually plays with and practices getting into that physical side of taking over a game, I actually think that it prepares them more for the tougher teams and I've got to admit St. Pat's Town right now is not one of the tougher teams out there traditionally yes but when you've got 11 year 11s in your team you've got to be more mindful of them next year than this year now Ronnie's still a beast you know you still got to give him that respect because that's just who he is but most of the other, the other players are young they're just young and some of them may be year 12s but then they're really young year 12s so they're really year 11s you know which which makes the big difference but i wish that they would be i wish that that cole would be more physically dominant and show that physical presence more than anything else because i've already got skills i've already got real good talented players in those key positions like Harry's one of my favorite players to watch right now him and Charisma I like Charisma a lot in the way that he plays um, Lazarus is probably another one you can add to that too uh, just the way that he plays but when they physically I think if they practice to physically dominate another school then all that other stuff comes easy like if you win the breakdowns not in terms of just winning the ball but winning the the physical aspect side of it where a team kind of gives up because they know it's like oh we can't even beat you anyway we'll just wait for the next one to me that mindset already um gets you the win anyway and it, you've already won that side of it because you're going to win a lot more ball they're not really going to going to test you at any kind of point once you've already got the ball and that's kind of what you want from a player that's kind of what you want from the from your opposition it's for them to back off and not even try because you, you know you've already showed them how how much stronger you are than they are I wish Cole would do something like that. There were like times in that game, um, especially at scrum time, where it was so messy from both teams. And at first, I actually thought it was 
it was St. Pat's Town that was messing up their scrum. After a while, I was thinking, like, oh no, it's Wellington as well. But they had to sort that out, and it's not going to go, you know, that's not going to work for a team like Stream. Like, Stream's going to dominate you if you come scrumming like that. Those fellas at Stream are too good. That front row at Stream is too good if you're going to come every week, uh, every, every, every scrum with that kind of technique, that kind of messiness. Um, you can pretty much tell how weak their grips were, which was kind of strange to see. Um, sometimes you would see them adjust too much on impact. On that engage, you could see them, their bodies and shoulders turning, hips turning, things like that. I was like, man, why are you guys so unstable? And I and I and obviously they got like Namir Tialata there as their as their forwards coach. And so like I don't think it's him. I just think it's them in the game. Like maybe they lose, you know, all instruction once the game starts, but I don't imagine, and this is just me, I don't imagine them getting the wrong information at scrum time when you've got someone like Namir Tialata as your as your forwards coach. That's why Nelson is so good, because they got Wyatt Crockett. You know, that's why some of these, that's why I agree with players, ex-players coming back and teaching, uh, coaching first with things because, you know, the information and stuff gets passed on straight away. I have a feeling that those guys, in the, the heat of the moment, and the, you know, I just don't think they're as focused as they probably should be because I don't really like those scrums and it shouldn't have been that. If Cole was so, Cole should have been so dominant that, all the plays should have went, all the course should have went their way when it came to scrum time. But to me, it just looked so messy. It didn't look like, um, you know, it didn't look like uh, a team that has an all black for a coach, you know, guiding them. And to be honest, I don't think it was him. I actually just think it was you boys making sure that, were, you know, the scrum that you're setting is tight and it's, and it's, and it's immovable once even on impact because that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, Wellington's too strong, and Wellington's going to have those games. And um, for Wellington, Scots, and Stream, you guys really have a mental battle going on. It's not a physical battle; it's a mental battle. And the mental battle is the same thing that Westlake boys are having, uh, where Westlake boys is in a competition that's too easy for them. The mental side of the battle is where they're going to lose. Wellington, like Westlake boys have Totonga this week on Thursday, Tuesday or Thursday, I think it is. Those are the games that they need uh, to get better of those kind of games. That's why they want to move competitions or they should move competitions is because they're going to play too many easy teams. Um, and then mentally, if they're not really, once they face a big team, they're going to lose and that's probably going to be bad or they're gonna win with the smallest of margins when they should be bigger. Cole, Scotts, and Stream are the same thing. So you guys have got easier games uh, for most of the weeks until you get to play each other. Um, and then if you guys are not prepared, then you're really gonna struggle when you come up against each other. And the mental side of that is staying prepared. It may sound it may sound mean, but you really got to sort of keep your foot on the necks of even those that are smaller teams and you're smashing them. Don't let up. Don't let up at all. I would say push even harder, like what you guys are doing. Make sure you get all your all your attacking options right. Make sure you get all your form right. Make sure you know where you're attacking from. Make sure you know what everybody's roles are, and reiterate while you're on the field in play what you guys need to, to get better at. Because it's so easy when you're winning by 50 something points, still got 20, you know, 20 minutes on the board to just relax and just, you know, I say, like, nah, keep up your intensity. Because you're gonna need it, like, Silverstream know this as well. Silverstream is in the best position because they've been the most dominant team in, in Wellington for a while now. But they know that when they step out of the Wellington and then they have to come and play the Super 8 or they have to play, you know, someone like Fielding or that, it's like, oh no, we, we need to be intact with everything that we are. We need to be intact with, with our, our, our mint top talent that we are as players. I want to give 
my hundred percent. Like if if Drew's on the on the field, he wants to give the best that he is. He doesn't want to have to try and build up to that because he's had three easy games the last three weeks, and then he has to try and you know get like he wants to play at his best. And everybody in those those three top teams know that because you can't play Palmy boys like that. You can't play Palmy boys when you're when you're trying to get off a three winning streak and you've won each game by 50 points and you're just like, you're sort of that in relaxed mode. You guys, Scott, Stream, Cole, really need to get um, mentally prepared for what the season gives and more towards the back end of it. But if you prepare with these easier games, I think it'll be better. Um, Even watching, um, so I watched. I, I went to Fielding in St. Peter's on Saturday. Um, oh, so if someone's got that Scots and Napier game, can you send it to me? I, I really want to watch that one. That, that, that seemed like a really good, um, you know, uh, a really good game. From all the things that I heard from it, um, you know, Napier's trying to get into that Super Eight season. They're trying to get ready for that, and um, still trying to figure it out. I'm glad that Ben was put at number eight. I, I, I kind of like, for me personally, I like I like the personnel that they have. Obviously, I've got George as my number one player in the country right now. And right now I stand by him because he's just playing really good rugby. But I think the personnel of the team, um, in my personal opinion, is wrong. I think they've got guys that should be in different positions, but I think they've got everyone. I just think personally that they're in different positions. Um, obviously, coaches have their own thing that they're going on and what they're running is, is um, they need those guys for those positions. But in my just opinion from the outside, I feel like some of those guys are out of position and um, they're going to need to sort something out when this uh, the Super 8 starts because... Uh, uh, it's not an easy road, like people don't understand how hard the Super 8 is. But anyways, um, Fielding, I went to Fielding, I went to Cambridge, uh, went and watched St. Peter's and Fielding play. Um, not the easiest game to watch, eh? Like it was, um, for me all the calls were one way, that's not a St. Peter's fault, that's a, that's a, a riffing thing. Um, but it was all just one way cause for ages. Um, Fielding was the better team. But there's something about St. Peter's that um, if you let them go too much, like if you let them get um, little victories that, that, that shouldn't happen, I feel like you could lose to them if you're not careful. And what I mean by that is like they, they don't have a big forward pack at all, not, not even close to like a, a, a big forward pack, no thick guys on that team. You know, no, no real dominant um, physical guys. Um, But I feel like uh, if you have a look at what uh, Alapati did, well, Pati did it at first five, and I think they got it right because they had Pati at first five and um, Izzy at second five. And uh, Lucas Miller, Luca Miller was at the back at fullback. Uh, I thought the guy, I forgot the guy they had at centre. Um, but just the way that they figured that out and they almost dared you at first five to attack first five then dared you at second five uh, to attack at second five and then Izzy was just making all the right decisions Alapati was Pati was just drawing in that, that obviously that attention just the way that he plays you just look at him and go oh shoot we better not let this guy run but then at the same time you sort of had to, you have to stop your defense just for that split second. Then he gives the pass and then Izzy makes this real, real quick decision um, where while they're on the run. And for me, if you, if you, 
you let them get too many of those, I feel like they're gonna run you off the field if, if you're not careful. And if like, like they're a team that like if they score and you don't score back, uh, to sort of even it up and sort of to sort of flatten their, you know, uh, their confidence. I think their confidence builds too much. I think they're a team that their, their confidence builds too much. You you could be on the wrong side of this game, and you may be even like the stronger the stronger team on on paper. But if you give them too much, I can see Patti, um, um, Izzy, and uh, Luke and them, uh, even Joe Moore, who the, the half. I think Joe was at halfback. He was so good, and like his command of of the game as well. I wish he would be a bit more uh, direct and maybe just draw in um, a lot of attention before he passes the ball. But everything to me that he was doing, I think it was Joe Moore that was at halfback. Um, I thought he was great. Like I thought he was solid eight. And so like um, that team, um, even though feeling to me was obviously better on the day, I think that. If you're not careful, um, and you're supposed to win that game, um, you know you could you could easily lose. You could easily lose. Um, but obviously, in this game, like fielding, you know, fielding in the end, fielding actually finished with 13 players in there. Now there were some calls like they. Um, Who's their fullback? Javier, I think his fullback, the fullback was. You know, he ended up getting a, uh, two yellow cards and then got sent off at the end of the game. Said it was like a, um, said it was like a no arms tackle then I was, and like when they caught it, I was actually filming at the same time when he got sent off. And then when he walked past me, I go, bro, what did he say it was? And he goes, bro, you said that I, and he goes, yeah, he said that I, I had no arms. And so I went and watched it back on my one and you can clearly see him wrapping with his, his right arm and then you can see his left arm already uh, wrapped around him as well and I was thinking I think this guy is just looking at hard hits and just saying that they must be shoulder they, you know there must be no arms tackled you know things like that but uh, what's his name Javier um uh the fullback uh, what's his first name sorry bro I forgot what his first name was um but like he he had a massive game I thought he was so good uh, I thought he was so good. He scored like a mean try, uh, like a by himself try, you know, individual try. Well, I thought that like, uh, yeah, I thought like I, I guess like he would have been one of the best players in the field if he didn't get sent off. But I mean, that's just I don't know. I guess that's just how it is. Um, Penny is his name Javier. That's right. That's what his name was. But um. What's his name? Uh, Rupini is probably the number eight. You know, he, he was probably one of my favorite on the day. Him and Dane Johnston, but I think Dane Johnston is going to be one of those guys that uh, I think I might have to take him off my 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 team of the week because I think if I watch him every week, he's going to be on there every week. Like, he's just so good. He's just so good. So dominant. So strong. Um, even gives the ball like he's not like a ball hole or anything like that he doesn't just run it just to run it um you know he's got a lot of substance to the way that he plays and you know um, i think they're like yeah i think the more that he plays he should probably you know they should probably give him a lot more credit than um um than we're probably used to because to me, he's like a New Zealand secondary school uh, talent, you know, and, and, and he's at that level. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the game. I wish I wish the refing was a bit better. Um, Got to be top five of one of the worst refs that I've, I've seen. And, and he's actually like an established ref. Um, and I've seen him before and he's been good on other games. Like he's been good on other games. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Refs can have bad days. It just sucks that when they have bad days, it just affects the team. I, obviously, it didn't affect the outcome of what, probably what it should have been anyway. But you know, I've seen them have some really good games and have really good control. Just one must be just one of those days because he, he's usually a really good, uh, really good ref. Um, all the other games I watched as well. Um, 
the Hastings Napier, uh, New Plymouth one. I thought that was a massive game. Um, Hastings uh, going over New Plymouth. Um, and I kind of think that they're pretty underrated, today. Eh? I think that um, New Plymouth Boys is a pretty underrated team. And even myself, um, even myself, like I think that I, th I am kind of underrating them only for the fact that they are they're a young team. You know, they're a, they're, they're a young team. And I think that like, I think when you have young teams, it's hard to like really visualize, um, especially in the Super, Super 8, them getting to a, a place of dominance. And I, and I mean like, not dominance in the way that they should be smashing everyone, but really in the Super 8, you only have like four games to really establish like who you kind of are. And two two losses in a row in, in the Super 8 is, is massive. New Plymouth have like a, um, have one of the best, they have one of the best back lines in the country, I think. Liam Davis, you know, like, um, Braden, Vili, um, Jack as well. Like, I think these guys are just so talented together that they make up for all your weaknesses that you have. And maybe that's what it is. And maybe the more that I watch them, even when I watch them at Grandma as well, that forward pack kind of held it together and, and like, a. In a way that I guess yeah, you you wish that they would, because I think like I think they could have easily like given up, and I think there's like there's a lot of credit to that to that that forward pack that they actually stay in these games. But once you get the ball out to Liam Davis and Braden um, Nelson and um, and Vili, and making sure that these guys not even like have space to run but have an opportunity to make a play these guys will and that goes with like one missed tackle one missed tackle to them is, is like uh, a threat of like uh, another 25 meters locked onto that and most of the times you wouldn't have teams like that have those kind of players but like um new plymouth have it and then like the way that jack um Wiseman, the way that he works um, from second five is kind of kind of the same as like what Izzy does, um, um, Kamana over at um, um, St. Peter's, where he can make those skip passes, he can make those those uh, sort of uh, behind the play passes, having it all like sort of link up, has great timing, all that kind of stuff. And then if he needs to take it to the line, he takes it to the line and he usually makes you know, some guys miss or he's just hard to bring down, stays on his feet, all that kind of stuff. But when they played Hastings, I didn't actually think that they were going to give much, you know. But when you have the big front row like that, that played really well. I thought they, I thought they were really good too. And they muscled up against like one of the best front rows in the country. I, I kind of thought maybe I've got this wrong, which I which I kind of do now, and I'm starting to think maybe I've got these guys wrong, and maybe my evaluation of them um, individually needs to be done again because obviously these guys are standing up to bigger, better teams. Like think about it, like both Hastings and Auckland Grammar, both top five teams. But when you have like a front row who have like Soane's, um, Soane and um, uh, Tua is the other one. Tua, 
Tour. I can't remember his last name. Tirimana or Torimana or something like that. But Tour is like massive. Tour is like 6566. Uh, Sonia is just a real solid kid. Both of them play um, forward and aggressive. I wish Tour would be a lot more aggressive than what he actually is. Uh, he's kind of like the guy that smiles all the time on the field when he should be just you know ripping dudes up and you know that he's big and strong but you just kind of want him to show him more but um you know even Brody and and and, and Jake Dingle like just massive players and uh, Luke Goodman is another one who played at six and then they had that other big fella at eight I can't remember what his name is but I think the big dude at eight with Luke and then when Riley comes back from injury I think that should probably be the loose forward trio and along with that front row of, of Tua, um, Sean and Suane are probably, what, are probably the ideal one that you want. I think if you're going to be young in the forward you might as well be big and young. I think you might as well have go with size and young and then um, let guys like Riley just run around and, and sort of make plays. Uh, defensively as he does make sure Luke gets the ball and, and that other big white fella the other big white kid who's who's like a really good ball runner too I like like he's like another 6'5 6'4 6'5 kind of kid um, but yeah they're just really good runners Tua I think needs to be more aggressive running the ball um, you know and, and, and not and fighting uh, to go to ground, I think he should just try and stay on his feet a lot more, like a lot longer, sort of eat up a little bit more of those meters. Hastings on the day were just, just too good and just too organized. Um, then once they started getting a roll on, you know, it was really hard for New Plymouth to catch up. I actually just don't think, I, I don't think New Plymouth is that, is that far away. I mean, I don't think that far away because even like when I was watching um, Palmy Boys and Gisborne I think Palmy Boys I think maybe in the end is going to be stronger than Hastings and might, maybe in the end could win you know the top four because Palmy is such a good team as well you know um, yeah I have, I have a feeling that Palmy might be the, the team to go for I did went over Gisborne like Gisborne weren't like if you look at the scoreline Gisborne looks like Gisborne was out of it but The scoreline was way different to what the game was. You know, the score was way different to what the game was. So, um, Gisborne are not far away either. I, I think the, the Super 8 competition is a lot closer than it has been in a lot of years. And Gisborne's always taken the, the brunt of that. Gisborne and New Plymouth boys have always taken the brunt of that. You know, being on the other end, the, the other end of, of the scale and sort of there's a bigger gap from the other six to those two. I think this year it's, it's probably drawn a lot closer and like I guess maybe in scores it's going to be different but in terms of um, toughness uh, you know time on the field where it was real competitive I think that has actually gone a lot bigger. The time of competitiveness is, is a lot longer and wider than it has been in the in the, in the other years. Um, but yeah that, that Palmy and Gizzy game was, was a good one too. Um, all the other games around the country, um, uh, obviously St. John's is really good against Lindisfarne. Lindisfarne is going to be one of those schools as well where, you know, like you think that like um, with the, the youth in their team, um, the youth in their team is going to be um, one to be careful with next year. Like Lindisfarne is probably going to be one of those teams you don't really want to play um, 
when they're on a roll because I think that they're, they're going to be maybe top two next year in, in, in the CNI. I, I have a feeling they're going to make the finals in the CNI next year. Um, but yeah, they're going to be a hard team to, to, to beat. Um, King's College and, and St. And St. Kinnigan. St. Kinnigan's had uh, their five point win over King's College. Uh, St. Kinnigan's is still the number one team in the country. Still the one to beat. Um, uh, I don't know how, how, you know, they're going to have to stay pretty perfect to actually be moved off that spot, but they're looking good though. They're looking like a number one team too, but like I mean, like look at Auckland Grammar. Auckland Grammar is kind of the same. Auckland Grammar have been playing really good. They won 36 7 um, in their game against St. Paul's. Um, again, Westlake Boys 53 14. Kelson winning 56 0. To me, Kelson just, I think they, they got to a point where they just took it out and deal with because I think they know that they should have probably won last week and St. Peter's is on a rise right now. Uh, but yeah. Dilworth is better than their zero points and so like um, I think they might just be in one of those games where they caught Kelson on the wrong week. Um, Nelson beating St. Bede's 27-15. Um, St. Peter's beating Liston 41-14. Uh, Sacred Heart beating uh, Botany Downs 43-10. And Botany Downs like I said last week, Botany Downs has got to get used to getting a hiding. But they, they, they need to get um, they need to take everything that they can from each one of these losses and just keep fine tuning your team and fine tuning your your players. Don't get don't get too down that you guys are losing because the one A is not a competition that you just jump into and be successful. It's just not that way. Dilworth had a problem with it, Tangaroa had a problem with it, St. Paul's had a problem with it, like every team has a problem with it. That's why some of those teams that drop out all the time, already had a problem with it, they've dropped out, Oda Who was in there before, they've dropped back. It's not easy to be in there, so like don't take it so hard as a team that you guys are losing these games. Just make sure you go review the tapes, review the games, be honest with your guys selves of what things that you guys are mistaking, take accountability too for the mistakes that you're making. If you haven't had a good game, just tell the boys, it's like, man, I haven't good, had a good game, I didn't have a good game, what was I doing wrong? And be able to try and, and, and take that criticism. Be honest with it, like don't be in denial, don't say that it's blame on me, it's like, it's not that at all. But you gotta be able to take these criticisms and be able to build on it and learn from it so that when you do get to the games that you can really compete at, that you actually make a game of it. If you guys get too far down there, it was like, no one was expecting you guys to beat Sacred Heart. No one was even expecting you guys to get close. But what you do need to expect, we, we do expect from you, and I think most of Botany Downs supporters and even like the 118s, all we expect from you to do is get better at the next game. No one's expecting you guys to make a big run in this. This is not, this is not, not a movie. You guys have to go through your, your lumps and your bruises just like everybody else. Just get better with every single game. I think that's what everybody's asking for. Don't get too down on yourselves that things are going wrong. That's, that's fine. Just learn from it. You'll be all right. St. Thomas had a big win on um, uh, on the weekend against Shirley Boys, uh, 43-12, 45-22, that was St. Peter's. Silver Stream being widened up uh, uh, 46-7, Southland hitting 62 against uh, Otago Boys, second 15. That Christchurch, I want to watch that Christchurch versus St. Andrews. I actually thought St. Andrews should have been better than this. I wasn't expecting that score. So if anyone's got the game, please try and pass it on. I want to see what happened because St. St. Andrews is a good team. But 43 no, that's not the St. Andrews that I that I thought was, you know, I thought the scoreline would be like a 22-10 kind of scoreline. I thought it would be like that, not 43 no. Um, Otago boys winning 21-12 that, you know, uh, I'm getting ready to watch that game. Um, I really want to watch that De La Salle Mags one. I think De La Salle should be better than that. I've seen Mags and I've seen what they have. Mags have good promising players, but I think De La Salle is more established than that. And I don't know, I'll, if someone can see me in the game, they'll be, I'll, I'd love to watch that game. Um, and then St. John's winning, obviously, 46-22 over Lindisfarne. 
Mahirangi Bay being messy is probably uh, the biggest surprise of the week. I knew that they were going to do really good because Mahirangi has been playing really good and they've got a really good um, team right now. Um, I mean, I spoke about them last week, but to beat Massey, I don't know if they've ever done that before, but that, that's got to be a new one. That actually has like, that's like two sides. like, how good has Mahirangi been, you know, how, how good have they right now but also messy how come this has even gotten to that point you know this is this is one of the questions for them too rosmini uh, against rangi toto uh, i thought it would be closer but i guess rosmini just came out and you know uh, kind of in a way i don't want to feel you know sound mean about this but put rangi toto back in their place i guess uh, 60 to 12. rangi toto has been playing good too so um, i actually want to catch one of the games um uh, soon off and then uh, Takapuna beat Manurewa High School and Manurewa was still going through your struggles they still got to figure out their league rugby thing um, that's going on uh, other scores that I was probably uh, oh there I knew that they would beat Waitakere Odohu going down to Avondale yeah Southern Cross is probably one of the teams you should watch out for too I think they're going to have a big season this year maybe be maybe go um maybe make the finals and that and that uh 1b pokedon is probably the other one that you probably want to watch out for them beating howard 28 20 uh was a big one um Roto losing to pukekoe ah, man i really wish that um counties and waikato was together in terms of that competition because Roto, uh pukekoe they need to play you know like uh, cambridge and uh, Mata Mata, Tiamudu, like teams like that, Tokoroa, um, even Topo would be a good one to come, you know, to, to play against Pukeko and Rose Hill, Waiuku. Uh, Tuoka losing to Papakura was, was weird. I, I actually thought Tuoka would win that game. Uh, but yeah, that, that, was a, that was a big surprise. Um, no surprises with the Mata Mata beating uh, Hamilton Boys senior black team. Uh, Tiamudu winning, um, Tokoro beating Morrinsville. Uh, was it Cambridge having a good win over um, Fraser, which 49-19, I thought it might have been a bit bigger. Um, Topo just losing the uh, Rotorua Boys second 15. That was uh, that was probably one of the biggest surprises that I, uh, you know, because second 15 for Rotorua Boys. Rotorua Boys second 15 is probably one of the best in the country. They're, they're always so good. There's, there's not that big of a gap between the first 15 and the second 15. So when you get the, the second 15 playing against all these, you know, all these all these other sides that are first 15, lower first 15, they, they really give them hiding. So Topo is actually a really good side right now. Papa Moore beating Western Heights 2029 is um, uh, not a surprise. I think Western Heights dropped off a bit this year. Mount Munganui going down to second 15 from Tauranga Boys. That was a twist, uh, 17-12. I thought that was a, that's a pretty hard one for Mount Munganui. But um, Mount Munganui College is probably one of those teams that are starting to build up, you know, a really good reputation now for rugby and starting to keep some of their players and like some of their players don't go to, you know, Tauranga Boys, which most guys from smaller colleges do. They usually go to the boys schools, you know, to get better at rugby get better opportunities, better games, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
But yeah, um, Whanganui Collegiate winning against uh, uh, St. John's Hastings, 43-17. Um, I want to see that St. Paul's Wesley game. So if someone's got that one, please send that through. Um, St. Paul's winning 14-12. But Rafkill beating um, Francis Douglas, that's the game that I really want to see. That's probably the biggest game that I really want to see this week is Rafkill winning 38-22 over Francis Douglas. Um, good score. Massive score. Rongatai beating Tawa. I actually thought Tawa would have this game over Rongatai. Um, um, Rongatai winning 27-17. St. Bernard's winning 27-10 uh, over Hibs. Um, Bishop Viard winning 33-10 over Taita College. Uh, another good one. Um, going down to South Island. Melbourne and Timaru. Melbourne boys winning 31-17 over Timaru. You know, Christ College, they're looking at a top 25. I think Christ College has got to be a top 25 school. Uh, winning 55-5. Um, and I think in the way that they did it too, it's just that same thing I'm seeing, that running rugby, you know, just so organised, so um, precise with their attacks. You know, they're just... Salmon's not a bad school, that's the other thing. Salmon combines like a really good squad. Um, so Christ, because um, I'm I'm planning to go to Quad this year down in Nelson, and um, I'll be real interested to see them live, and I really want to see them live. So really trying to save that money, trying to save that money so I can get down there. Um, Waimea combined uh, beating uh, Mid Canterbury. Oh no, um, Auraki uh, combined 41-24, uh, Mid Canterbury 25-7 uh, over St. Bede's uh, second 15, and Rangiro. Rangiro is a team that should be probably be in the first. They should be in the in the, in the Premiership division. Like, Rangiro has got a good team this year. They beat Kashmir 78-3. Kashmir combined. Uh, John McGlashan and Wakatip. Wakatip is so good. Wakatip is so good. They're probably another undersized uh, under. Um, you know, uh, undercover kind of team that probably should be get more uh, support, get more talking about. Um, Menzies is another one, them winning over Tyree 36 13. South Otago having a massive win over, uh, say, Kevin's uh, 59 31. And Cromwell beating, oh, losing to uh, King's second 15 19 13. Um, but yeah. Oh no, South. Uh, uh, Central Southland uh, College beating Mount Aspiring 15-12 that was probably another surprise too but I mean down in Deep South they've got some good teams they've got some good players um, I just wish we'd see more of them I just wish most teams would just live stream the game so we can share it amongst each other and, and check out all these players that we don't really get to see at all you know um, I guess New Zealand as a whole is not really you know, in the uh, in the sharing space, uh, live stream sharing space. So, you know, we can just get what we can. But if you live, if you're from a school that live stream your game, send it to me so I can send it around and share it around with um, everybody else so we can see all the talent that's going on around New Zealand. Um, as always, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, that's it for the Monday morning meeting uh, podcast. Uh, love you all. Later, ball.